Will McDaniel is a YouTuber who makes comedy skits with a bit of an abnormal twist. Did you bring me my chicken Kiev? Using techniques in both the physical and the digital, Will incorporates monsters in a myriad of approaches to converse with him, and truly commits to the sheer shock value that his art portrays. His specific creative style and workflow that is quite clear due to many behind the scenes videos, teaching how he created some of these exclusive creatures that could only come from an imagination as a natural as Will's, is one that should be highly praised for his boundless dedication. Oh, that's, that's nice you to say. Probably a bit more flattering than I'd be, but yeah. Back before his current creative experience, Will started making more normal skits. These would be occasional, with no real schedule, and typically with a few of his friends. Although they were published so long ago, they still have a feel of professional quality since the use of masking, good cinematography, keyframing, and green screen were present. Over the years, Will became more experimental, dabbling with video blogs about films and animations. With this experimentation also came the development of one of his most viral videos, How to Make a Salad from Possessed Vegetables. This is the first appearance of one of the monsters that most relates to the ones that appear frequently nowadays, and is what truly sets him apart from the rest of the creators who make similar sketches. Past that point, he was still experimenting with geek culture, claymation, and skits while occasionally creating a brand new creature. Once the Alien Fruit video became his second most viral video, it became apparent that he had found what makes his creativity so intriguing. It was creating and using his alien-esque monsters to fuel a very specific situation that couldn't be easily replicated for the sake of laughter, weirdness, and entertainment. I actually qualified in architecture towards the end of my course I started doing videos in the course. My tutor loved it and encouraged me to do Cronenberg kind of stuff. I made lots of weird little meaty props. It's just all kind of self-taught in various YouTube tutorials and kind of making up as I go along. With all the talents that he taught himself with his creations since 2008, he had finally gotten to a point where all of his hard work was starting to pay off by recognizing a solved formula, yet factoring different elements to keep it fresh. Hello, and welcome to the Dubious Meat Company. Although this format is what hooked me, it's not everyone's cup of tea. In some cases, it's disturbing, not to a gruesome level, but it may be off-putting to see these creatures and the actions that they take, especially on Will. I personally enjoy it not just because of the different vibe it puts off, but because I recognize how much technical talent one would need to even make it remotely plausible to pull off the finished product. Similar to Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. You'll probably tell they've been quite a big influence on my stuff. <laughs> kind of fell in love with every single one and tried to not completely copy them. I'm making a faster scene one at the moment just to do something other than me. In these short films, Will applies a mixture of cinematic shots, animation, crafting, puppetry, special effects, green screen, a weird fascination with meat. Tell me about yourself and meats, boy. What is your relationship? with meat. Kind of evolved naturally, it was just because I started building stuff and I got a bit obsessed with using liquid latex, as you probably noticed. <laughs> and it's so easy to make stuff look good if it's that, because the natural shade of the latex lends itself to kind of meaty, weird, skinny, fleshy things. That's the kind of route I've gone down at the moment. Miniature figures, set design, sound design and sometimes even an occasional song to create a slice of a story. Welcome to the Damned of Phillips. These stories are so weird that although you know it's fictional, the way each film executes its effects makes it look so real, and with the believable acting that feels genuine as if it's actually happening to him, you're unable to look away, showing that Will has mastered the concept of shock factors. The main shock factors are the monsters and how they act in the films, how they look, their movement, how they talk. I thought I restrained you. Well, you tied my hands with tinsel. What kind of action they inflict on Will? <laughs> it all ties together to create a sense of morbid anticipation. The puppets, I suppose, never look like they're living, breathing things. You can't really tell, for the most part, how they're operated. Due to the design of either the puppet or makeup, it always looks grotesque. Whether it's played by him with a mask, costume, and makeup, or a creature that seems to be controlling itself out of its own volition. They either eat, travel through, manipulate, or hurt Will. Yeah, it's the easiest way, because I'm not really an animator, because I thought the other thing to do would be make animations, but I really know where to start. And I like making things with my hands, so I just thought I'd try my hand at making some weird monsters. When these actions do occur, it's always paired with a crafted sound effect that meshes perfectly with every single situation. The sound helps build the tone, adding to the non-verbal communication that the creature puts off, alluding to the possible danger. Since since not all of the monsters are necessarily violent in some capacity, the additional layer makes the scenes more vibrantly audacious, leading the audience to believe subconsciously that if a creature such as that existed in real life, it would give off that particular wave of sound.
sound when movement ensues. Even though there's definitely a shock factor, not every story actually contains it. There are some, such as Larry, where it's mostly Will interacting with a talking plate in a comedic way. You want to eat out of me? What if it's not? Weird for you, I mean, something to think it'd be weird. No! Another one is Melvin's dating video, where he interacts with some minifigures on his head. So are you trying to claim ownership of my left cheek? I'm not trying! I have the deed! Well, I could evict you by walking into a light breeze. Don't you threaten me! It's still weird, just not grotesque. The funny thing is, once you know how these creatures are made, it not only numbs the grotesqueness, but gives you a new perspective on the monsters, especially when Will has a series documenting how he creates them. The sketches themselves take so long, so I was keen to have stuff on my channel in between. They're just slightly easier to make than the main video. Wanting to teach is also kind of the specific type of puppet, I guess, and I was thinking if anyone was interested, it'd be quite nice to have a kind of teaching resource out there. In his tutorial, series, he dissects the inner workings of the alien fruit, Larry, the Pokemon in real life, Mr. Spatula Lipstick Face, the genie of the flaps, the possessed vegetables, the breakup buddy, and the bursting boil. This reveals his techniques in After Effects, his crafting abilities, and how he combines both elements, which shows how much actual work Will puts in behind the scenes. You've got visual effects breakdowns, which shows the same clip, but with an additional layer of effects each time. The amount of layers, which contain the special effects, the masking, point tracking, and the proper itself, all exported together to create something new. The actual crafting of the creatures and all of the liquids that appear, and to see how it was made from scratch. These are all a testament to how creative he is, which is mind-blowing. Most of my puppets have some form of After Effects in them. I kind of try and do it so you can't tell. Not being like a proper puppeteer or anything, I don't know the actual techniques, so it's all very much my arms in shot, or there's a wire there, so I'll remove that. Certain things like that boil, I literally couldn't think how to do it without compositing it in. The only way I like to use effects myself is compositing, so dropping stuff in that I've made practically. Aside from the particular creative steps he makes known, Will adds a special segment in this series. Can you show us how you move the possessed? Vegetables, please! Thank you, shouty Neil. As to give the viewer an additional yet unforeseen reason to glance on his work. In his newer episodes, Will introduces some monsters that are specific to his tutorial series. These are new subscriber Milestone, Shouty Neil, Martin Method, and Materials List. Each of these monsters are not present in any of the original short films, which creates a terrific and exclusive bonus for the tutorial series by supplying the entertainment when you originally went there for the information. It started off as not wanting to be too bland. Didn't want it to become just a wall of information. So I started bringing in these extra characters and then actually it turned into I got much more excited about making another comedy sketch within the tutorial video. So then I just started enjoying it too much and got carried away. Despite its exclusivity, the one creature that pops up the most in the series is Materials List. Yeah, because I was just thinking of an interesting way of putting the title in for Materials List and I thought, oh, I'll make it a guy that I can chat to. And then I actually really just fell in love with him and I want to keep bringing him back and try and create some kind of narrative around him in the future just because I quite enjoy playing him. This creature has three different forms. The first few times, Materials List is a creative aura, an idea, if you will, made visible by words on the screen and action that help bring everything together. Later in the loose storyline that's implemented, Materials List surpasses the conscious mind, appearing on a wall with yellow letters that has a style that is similar to some monsters that have been previously established. Finally, the last form- I am Materials List! Oh. Is a conscious being that eerily resembles a human human and likes to read out the materials. He was the easiest to make, definitely, and probably the easiest to film. He's one of the more embarrassing things to film. In the last video, I'm running around a load of public footpaths near me, dressed in this ridiculous face paint and <laughs> mask. Just like Materials List, Will also likes to read, except his reading entails the sponsorship he included. <laughs> I wanted to do the right sponsorship because I've been approached by a few people that just wouldn't fit and I felt like Skillshare, especially for one of my tutorial videos, I felt they'd be a good fit. I don't know if I'd do another one unless it was the right one and I wouldn't want to do too many. The way that Will added the sponsorship incorporated the characters. So I'd just like to take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video, who if you don't know are- Hello! Oh, you're back. Prove that he actually uses the product he's advertising. So I use a lot of puppets and practical effects on this channel, but in every video I actually use digital effects, and I've genuinely found Skillshare a fantastic place to learn and improve on these skills. I was watching these tutorials by Geordie, which is a great series of tutorials if you haven't tried After Effects before, and that this event took place at the end of the tutorial, as opposed to the beginning or very middle. This gives a very good example of how a sponsorship should be implemented, rather than grabbing hold of any sponsor that you can get the attention of. You can earn points, to enter drawings for free scholarship money. 
Is it legit? In Will's situation, with all of the specific attention he's getting with his current creativity, I would imagine it wouldn't be too big of a problem. Especially since I don't think anyone else could think of a sack of flaps that grants you wishes, an interview but the hirer is obsessed with me, a cult that worships a magical octagon, or a tourist that travels through your belly button. It's so... different. But I love it. I love it because it proves the fact that you can be successful just by being yourself. The more unique you can be, the more you'll stand out. And the more you stand out, the more likely of a chance that no one can find your specific content made from someone else since you're the only one that supplies it. Meaning that there's only one place to go for that specific kind of content. It's the same advice I've heard from others so many times, but I suppose you've just got to love the thing you're doing with a hope that it will eventually get somewhere. Will's talent shines beyond compare, simply because he's genuinely different. His creative process far surpasses people's expectations, which is clear in the final product. The sculpting of these monsters alone could attract an audience, but since Will married his creation with the concept of short films, a unique breed of film has emerged on the internet. He's always thankful for a new or returning viewer. I'm just grateful for anyone even watching one of my videos. Even if it doesn't lead to a new patron supporter, which shows his love for this creative talent and gratefulness to his community. I was making these weird videos for years before anything happened happened and I'd still be making them now even if my channel hadn't suddenly jumped up always with the hope that I'd be able to do it for a living I mean I wouldn't have stuck at it that long and ever actually gotten anywhere if I hadn't have loved it as much as I did mm -hmm.